Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's Wednesday morning here, and it's pretty windy, pretty gray, but maybe we can have a good day anyway. Uh, so today, Ken writes in, asking about uh, higher level languages in Serenity, and also, what do I think about LLVM? So thank you, Ken, for these wide open topics. Uh, <laughs> it's very good topics. So I guess I can start with LLVM because I don't know that much about LLVM, especially the internals. Now, I've used Clang a whole bunch because it was the, um, the compiler that we used at Apple for the WebKit project. And I've seen some of the LLVM internals because we had a project in WebKit for a while, or I mean, we actually released it, where we, um, we used LLVM as the fourth tier JIT backend for JavaScript. And uh, it was a pretty cool project. Basically, um, we got to a point where we believed that, or I should say they believed on the JavaScript core team, that um, by um, giving the uh, bytecode to LLVM from our JavaScript programs, and as much information as we could squeeze out of um, some runtime as possible, then we could have it do these um, C++ quality optimization work on the JavaScript programs. And this was supposed to be like uh, for programs that run very hot or for a long time, and you could get some really, really serious optimizations. And it was a really cool project, but it ended up bringing in the whole LLVM infrastructure into uh, JavaScript core. And uh, we were building with like, um, it was like a fork of LLVM in the WebKit um, tree as like a dependency for a while. And, and that was, um, it was a big, big thing. And it was pretty cool, but in the end, we, I think uh, they shipped with it for one year or something like that. And then uh, it was just too heavy um, and slow. And since it was not really designed to be a like a JIT backend so much, uh, then um, they ended up writing their own version called uh, B3, I think. Uh, B3 is the replacement for uh, the LLVM backend in JavaScript core, and it sort of does the same thing, like this low-level optimizations, but it's specially tailored for JavaScript core. And so it's a lot faster and achieves a lot of the same uh, type of optimizations. So, but I, I had some visibility into LLVM, and of course I've also had some friends who worked on LLVM in the past, um, so I've, I've listened to them talk about it sometimes. But that's the extent of my knowledge about the internals. Now, as a project, I think that it's, it's really neat, or as a concept, I would say. It seems to me that LLVM allows, um, allows you to create new languages and experiment, right? And you can, you can create a new language, and as long as you can have it generate LLVM um, IR, or uh, what is it, the LLVM intermediate representation stuff, the LLVM bytecode, uh, as long as you can make a language that spits that out, you can have that language um, compile that to um, native code and, and like get really serious optimizations and stuff. So I think that's really interesting because it means that you can write like a front end for a new experimental language if you want to mess around with some ideas and you can have all the optimization stuff or a lot of the optimization stuff already there taken care of and you can just plug into that. Um, and I'm, I think that's, that's neat and I think some of the new languages that are being worked on right now are obviously benefiting greatly from the existence of LLVM and um, the fact that you can you can focus on the front end, front end part of a new language. So very very cool. Um, and I guess I should say I would like to use Clang for Serenity, but I just haven't haven't put in the time to build a cross compiler. But it's something I'm interested in because you know GCC has has uh, served as well for many years, but it has warts and it is cumbersome at times and it is at least to me it's not hackable in any 
in any pleasant sense of the word. Um, you know, whenever I, I want to look at how something, why something doesn't work with GCC, then it feels like a whole ordeal to go and investigate. And um, Clang definitely looks more approachable in that sense. Anyway, um, that's not a technical judgment. That's just me being, um, what am I being? I guess I'm, I'm having a little prejudice, maybe. That's not so good. Um, I should, I should reevaluate this position. Maybe I, I'm just uh, afraid of C++ or afraid of GCC because I've been intimidated by it in the past or something. Anyways, um, I have to look at why I feel that way. Uh, anyways, let's move on to the other thing, the um, high-level language stuff. <laughs> so, um, obviously C++, uh, C++ is the main language in Serenity, and basically everything is written in C++, even stuff like code generators, and the only thing that's not C++ is the build scripts. Um, but maybe they should be C++, huh? Nah, um, I, I, I appreciate high-level languages um, to a point. I think shell scripting is really neat, and I really like stuff like PHP for text processing tasks. Like whenever I have a big, big file of text or comma-separated values or something, I always end up busting out the old PHP interpreter and just um, writing myself some some horrendous dollar soup um, because it works, right? And you can get stuff done. Now, I, I we already have some um, higher level language ports in Serenity. We have a uh, bash port and there is a port of Python, although I'm not I'm not really a user of Python, so I, I don't know how, how good the port is because I haven't been using it. And... Oh man, I, I can't even remember. I think maybe we have a Lua port. <laughs> I haven't... I never used Lua either. Uh, but some people have been putting these scripting language ports in the tree, and that's cool. And I'm... I'm all for ports. Um, I think it's, it's very nice if it can turn out that it's possible or even easy to port software to Serenity. Um, although it's it's not something that I'm terribly interested in doing myself. Um, if you are familiar with my work, you already know that I like to build things from scratch. And um, that's just the type of stuff I like. Um, but anyway, I, I, do, I do recognize that Serenity will need some higher level languages in order to feel like a more complete system. And obviously shell scripting, being a Unix system, or a Unix-like, um, shell scripting is one of those things that we just have to have. And the uh, shell program in Serenity um, aims to one day be uh, a, like a born compatible shell, I guess, like a POSIX compatible shell. And it's nowhere near that. Like, it can run commands and uh, redirect file descriptors and do a little bit of light piping, but nothing terribly exciting beyond that. You can manipulate the environment a little bit, but there's no, uh, no control flow um, or anything like that. So I think that's the first target there, like to make the shell more scriptable and more usable. And then um, obviously Serenity has a web browser and um, it's going to need a dynamic language at some point. And it's just something that I have not uh, engaged with yet. And it's mostly just because inspiration has not been striking yet. <laughs> Uh, in that area. I've been, uh, you know, taking it a little easy with the browser there for a bit, um, sort of regrouping myself, and um, I talked to some old friends on the WebKit team after I started on the browser, and um, basically got their um, 
modern views on how you would implement um, stuff like layout and rendering in a web engine if you were to start from scratch today. And they had a lot of good ideas and, um, and ideas that are forcing me to rethink what I've been doing with LibHTML. But that's a good thing. And um, it's just, um, it's just I'm, I'm still processing these ideas, I guess. And um, it's going to be really, really good to get back to it once it's finished in my head. Um, but luckily, there's so much else to do all the time in Serenity that it's not like, not like I'm running out of ideas. So, um, but higher level languages, right? So, so definitely shell scripting is is something that uh, the system needs, and then um, JavaScript obviously is gonna have to be a thing for the browser, and. Outside of those two, there's definitely room for other languages, right? Because shell scripting can be really clunky, and JavaScript can be clunky in its way, um, and it, it really doesn't. It really does feel like to me like JavaScript is not so accessible from the um, command line perspective. But then again, I've sort of been, I've been sitting out the whole uh, Node.js revolution or, or whatever. Like I have not. Um, done anything with that ever, and I don't know anything about it, so maybe there's a whole world of things there um, that I'm not aware of where you can do everything with JavaScript. Um, but one thing with me is that I'm just, I'm a real sucker for types and typing, and um, that's something that makes stuff like JavaScript and, and PHP and these things kind of unpalatable to me, um, because to me, it feels like a cognitive burden to have to not tell the compiler or the interpreter what the types of things are. Um, and it's like you're putting that responsibility on me instead <laughs> to, to always make sure that, that things um, are implicitly correct, which is so weird. Uh, strong typing, I'm, I'm a huge fan of strong typing. Uh, but. Regardless, uh, I recognize we need some high-level languages, and I'm unlikely to build a new high-level language myself because I don't think that I have any particular ideas that I would like to experiment with in that regard, other than uh, C++ as a scripting language. But I, I suspect that would not be uh, the best scripting language. Maybe if you took out a lot of the uh, template features and just made it really simple. Eh, eh. I don't need it. Um, if I can, if we can get like um, shell scripts and JavaScripts up, that would be that would go a long way, I think. And then we can think about other stuff later on. Um, now, I grew up um, with BASIC being the first language that I learned, right? And then Visual BASIC came after that. So there's a very, I have a very strong love for the rapid application development style of the 1990s, you know, where you would design your form in Visual BASIC and then you would double click the button and uh, it would bring up this um, event handler in a code editor and you could just start typing in this sweet, sweet, Visual Basic language to tell it what would happen when you click on the button, and um, that's a place I would like to get to, definitely one day. And it doesn't seem unreasonable to get there with C++ to me, but maybe a scripting language is right for that type of thing. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I guess that's always my answer to these things. Like, we'll see, we'll see what we do. But, um, but the two must-haves are born shell and JavaScript. And then everything else is nice to have or like exploratory. Um, yeah, so, but I definitely <clears throat> would love to see more ports. And if, we, if somebody would, 
but bring in like a PHP port, I would probably be using it to do goofy things. Um, because, I mean, I'm still discovering how I feel about these things, and, um, and this commute talk format is really helping me with that. I'm learning so much about myself just from, from answering questions and talking about stuff here. And it really is starting to seem to me like programming languages, I'm pretty fine with the way that they are, and, and I'm happy just using them. And I don't feel this urge to make my own. Whereas with operating systems, I'm not happy with the, with the available ones, and um, I don't find them satisfying or fulfilling or fun. So I feel a strong urge to replace, uh, or to, to um, not replace, but to, to supplement what is available. But yeah, <laughs> anyways. I'm sure that, that everyone has their own favorite dynamic language that they would love to, to use in a, in a new operating system. And I think that if we just uh, play our cards right and provide a good platform, then you'll be able to port basically every language to Serenity. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. But we'll see. If you're interested in that type of stuff, then um, there's a lot of a lot of fun that can be had porting software. Um, sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes you have to add kernel functionality. Sometimes you just have to edit a build script, and it just compiles and runs right away. Um, but I'm running out of thoughts here, so <laughs> I'm just gonna say. Uh, thank you, Ken, for asking about um, these things, and for you, the listener or viewer, for tuning in. Uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me on the commute, and I hope you have a good day. I'm going to try my best to have one here, and I will see you next time. Bye.